I once heard the great Cornell West say something, man, during a lecture. So Cornell West giving a lecture. I don't know if it was here or somewhere else, but you know, he's always around town. He was around Harvard a lot, went to Harvard undergrad and all this stuff. But um, he gave his lecture about spirituality, his own spirituality. He's a very strong uh, Christian, but he said, even though I'm a strong Christian, he said, there's a war going on in my soul. So, so <laughs> there's the good part. There's a good part of me. And then there's some times I don't want to necessarily be so good. And I, and I was really ap appreciative of his honesty because I think we're all like that. And the reason I thought of that, when I saw John Gruden say, I'm a good person. Okay, sure. But that's not really the point. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> okay, I'm a good person. He said, I'm a good person. I go to church. I've been married for 31 years. Okay, great. You know, all right, check those boxes. What's that got to do with anything? <laughs> I was going to say, I was going to say, that you can be a good person. You can be a good person and do stupid stuff. You can be a horrible person and do something that's redeemable. I mean, that's the whole human existence. It's the human experience. We're all complicated and, hyper and, and hypocritical and, and hard to figure out. But let's get back to the point. The point, J.A., is John Gruden said some things and he's asking for forgiveness, but he hasn't necessarily accounted for what he said. It's kind of like that. It's like that, that storefront forgiveness. It's that superficial forgiveness. Okay, I'm forgiven now, right? You don't have any questions? No, no. I, I Look, maybe it's my journalistic bias. You tell me, Jay, uh, my journalistic bias. I feel like um, there are some questions we got to talk about. Right. Okay, I got some follow-ups for you. And, and it goes beyond <laughs> journalism. To me, it's it's a fundamental yeah. of, of our societal, and I certainly believe in forgiveness. But in order to receive forgiveness, you need to make amends. And that's what we're not seeing from Gruden. That's what we so often fail to see from people say, oh, we deserve a second chance. You deserve a second chance if A, you serve your penance for what you did wrong, and B, you attempt to make amends. And that's why my topic bar on this was uh, there's a Gruden way and there's the Harden way. Hardaway. Because to me, Tim Hardaway is the gold standard for messing up and then doing things to correct it. He made amends and he very famously, his, his offense, if it's words, when we're talking in the, in the world of words, few people said things more offensive than what Tim Hardaway said when he straight up said, I hate gay people. He didn't say, I dislike. No, wow. he said, I hate gay yeah. people. Deeply yep. offensive and paid the price, yep. was immediately banned from all the uh, All-Star Weekend activities to which he'd been invited to in 2007. And he feels it, it delayed his his entrance into the Hall of Fame, which is which is uh, about to happen for him now, and which was the reason he's back in the news. And San Francisco just did a chronicle, and he revisited um, all those things. But it also revisited the things that he did to make amends. Um, after saying those things that that were deeply hurtful to gay people, um, he he advocated on behalf of, of marriage equality, for example, and and gay marriage. Um, he he spoke to it and and got to know, for example, and supported Jason Collins when Jason Collins came out as gay. And, and he has worked on behalf, he has met with, with members of the LGBT, LB, LBGT community and tried to make amends and is now an advocate on their behalf. And that's how it's done. Uh, you, you don't say, hey, just give me a second chance. You need to address the issue. It's similar to when BYU and their athletic director refused to address the issue with what happened with the Duke volleyball player who was called uh, a series of racial epithets uh, he didn't want to talk about it. Michael, let me ask you, if, if let's say you, you want to go on a weight loss program, right? And you've got a trainer and you've got a nutritionist and you want to lose weight. Hey, it starts with hello, acknowledging Mike. you're overweight, right? Here's what we need That's to address. Right. <laughs> I am overweight. Therefore, I need to address this. I need to embark on a program. So you need to start by acknowledging what you did wrong and why it was offensive to people and what you're going to do about it. That whole weight loss thing sounds like you were in my living room about uh, 25 minutes ago. Man, <laughs> I'm telling you, you got it. But I'll tell you this. Uh, you're, you're absolutely right. And with Gruden, the thing that stood out to me, Jay, well, m many things stood out to me uh, from his appearance. And, and we will ha we'll have that sound uh, later in the show. But the thing that stood out to me is his, his request for a second chance. He said, I, I, I really, I made a mistake which is kind of low. 
We all made semantics. mistakes. Like, no, we, we have an all set offensive things in the email and hit send. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, right. I made a mistake, but it wasn't one. Okay. In semantics, you made a mistake. <laughs> you made a mistake that is like an episodic series. Okay. It's a long running <laughs> series. It was going on for a while. Okay. But he said, I hope I get a second chance. So both things can happen. And I look, I'm not a guy who's just going to sit here and just like just hammer you for no reason. I believe in grace. I believe in extending grace. Uh, and, and grace has been it has been extended to me in situations. So I, I'd like to you know pay it forward. But there's a chance that you can be forgiven and not get a second chance. And I think that is not um, those things are, are not in conflict. I can forgive you. Like, let's say I'm a team owner. Hey, John Gruden, I forgive you. I forgive you. I, I heard, I followed your story. I forgive you for all the things that you said. I, I was offended by them. I was surprised that that came from you. Yeah, you're forgiven. But um, now I have other questions about you as a leader, and I don't think I'm ready to give you the leadership of my, I'd like to give yeah. you the reins of my organization. I'm, I'm in no rush to give you $10 million a year to right. represent my franchise. <laughs> Which is what I he mean, wants, like, clearly. Uh, he, like, he had that nice big contract with the Raiders. He lost it for ooh. some old man. I, I will say this. I would hate for some stuff to cost me my job that occurred before I even had the job, which was what happened here. Mm. So I, I could understand the frustration here. Some stuff surfaces from your past that had nothing to do with what you're doing now ooh. currently, and yoink, you're, you're out. <laughs> so I get that frustration, yeah. but again, shouldn't have done it in the first place. We're so fortunate, Jay, that both of us, that we went to school, uh, no Twitter, no Instagram. No cell phones, <laughs> right. No cell phones, like, or Thanks if you did, God. if you had a cell phone, it was harder, like cell phone, you needed like one of those U-Haul, like <laughs> those like many U-Hauls to bring your <laughs> cell phone al along. Like old school Fred Flintstone, they put it on the side, the car tips over. I mean, it was huge. Now we've talked on and on about John Gruden. I want, I want everybody out there to watch and listen to the sound. And then we'll come back and, uh, and, and unpack it some more. Here's John Gruden with the Arkansas Little Rock Press Club. Is that what it was called? Yeah. Little Rock? I want to know the story behind club? this. The Deliver a Touchdown Club, I think it was. The Touchdown Club. The Touchdown Club of Little Rock. Here's John Gruden. I'm not going to um, uh, say anything but honest things here. I'm ashamed about uh, what has uh, come about in these emails. And I'll make no uh, excuses for it. It's just, it's, it's shameful. But uh, I am a good person. I believe that. I, I'm, I, I go to church. I've been married for 31 years. I got three great boys. I still love football. I've made some mistakes, but I don't think anybody else in here hasn't. Uh, and I just ask for forgiveness, and hopefully I get another shot. <laughs> oh, you know, you know I, I, I got to say, I got to say. I've been married for 31 years. Like, what's that got to do with anything, man? <laughs> I gotta, say, I gotta say, I gotta say, hearing it, it's worse. <laughs> you know, like when you hear it, you're like, you know, sometimes you read it, you go, oh, okay. But when you see it and you hear he's it, he's trying it's to worse. sell it. Yeah. And it's also it's, sort of a, a tacit admission that he's ashamed that it came out, right? He's not necessarily yeah. ashamed. He, he's, he, I'm ashamed with what came out in the emails, right? Like, uh, I'm, I'm sorry that, that it came out. I'm sorry it got out there. Uh, you know, the other thing that that we never address is the fact that he felt comfortable sharing those with an executive of an NFL team that he felt like, OK, not only do I feel this way, um, mm. not as a no problem with with feeling this way. You know, he, he was convinced that he was in the right to feel this way, but he also was convinced that others shared that view. Right. And that he could send it no, to I somebody on their NFL email accounts. And, and that there would be no repercussions and, and that it, everything was okay. And we're amongst friends. We're amongst like-minded individuals who all feel this way. And I'm comfortable sharing these feelings that I have. I'm comfortable mocking the NFL's attempts at, at diverse, diversity. I'm comfortable calling the commissioner of the NFL yeah. uh, uh, a, a derogatory gay slur on an NFL email, sending that to an NFL yeah. email account. Right. I'm comfortable with these things. And okay, you said he was convinced that that somebody agreed with him. He didn't have to guess. He knew it. He knew it. He knew. He knew that that was a, a safe space. Now, I, this is gonna sound strange. I'm on John Gruden's side in some areas. 
I'm on John Gruden's side when it comes to his lawsuit. I'm fascinated by his lawsuit. I'm fascinated. Right. Why, 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 why him? Because, right. <laughs> okay, that, okay, look. Why, okay, why, really? why me, right? Are you going to single out me, right? Yep. These are the only emails that came out? Let me out? tell you something. If, if really, if we're talking about 650,000 emails, <laughs> they made a mistake. I'm going to say this. A, a shocker, the NFL made a mistake, a PR blunder, when I do believe I don't know if they were trying to set John Gruden up or just trying to leak it out, whatever they were trying to do. It, somebody, whoever leaked it, and I don't know if they had uh, they had authority to leak it or it was like a sinister thing, and then somebody in charge said, what are you doing? Oh, man, you just caused a, a huge problem for us. Whatever. That was the biggest mistake because now it puts the attention back on that mound of e- a mountain. That is freaking Everest. The Mount Everest of emails that I would love. You don't have to give me 650,000. Give me 50,000. Give me 50,000 of those oh. emails. I'll bet you I could I could take away five oh, or six also, jobs Michael. and five or six franchises, <laughs> right? Correct, correct me mean, if I'm wrong, but but these emails were, were unearthed in the process of, of researching all the malfeasance of the, the Washington football organization, right? Right, So exactly. So we've distracted from like the, the worst offenses have been committed and people involved in that organization going up to the very top, right? Like that's worse than what uh, what was said in those emails. And yet to date, the greatest punishment has been uh, meted out to, to John Gruden. So I'm with you there in that there is unfairness in who has been targeted through all of this. And, and we, we have lost track of, of the, the origin of those emails in the first place. How they came to be in the public sphere in the first place is because of what the very top of the Washington football organization was doing. I got to tell you, I don't know what kind of, uh, we were talking about you know Marvel and superheroes off the top. I don't know what kind of force field Daniel Snyder has around him. I don't know what it is. I mean, he's got a little... It's not Dr. Strange. It's more like Iron Man. I mean, this guy, right. so many things <laughs> have surrounded his franchise. So many bad things have happened that he has said that we know he has said that we know he's done. And yet he's never and a matter of fact, he's never been as he's never They're been punished as severely as Stephen Ross, right? And Stephen and, Ross is the and, whole thing. And he's done much Michael, worse. You, you, than said, you said about the, the questions, right? You, you said the questions you had as a journalist, the questions I would have for, for all his colleagues, the fellow NFL owners, you're comfortable having this person represent you. And the question I would have for Roger Goodell is, does Daniel Snyder represent the values that the NFL espouses, right? Are you comfortable having him? Do you, do you say he can honestly represent what the NFL espouses to be in the, in the type of leadership it would like to show the type of responsible citizenship it demands right uh, uh you know we just saw them fighting for harsher punishment for deshaun watson uh if you're going to say that deshaun watson did not represent uh the values of the nfl are you comfortable having daniel snyder continuing to be involved with this league and are the fellow owners who are really the ones responsible here are you comfortable having him in your midst? Does he represent you and the way that you feel and the way that you operate? That's the question I have. And they would say yes. And they would say yes. Apparently, their actions or their <laughs> silence says yes, right? It's a resounding yeah, yeah, yes they, based on their, their lack yeah. of punishment of him, their continued involvement with him. It's all a resounding yes. Hey, thanks for watching, brother, from another on YouTube. Make sure you hit subscribe before you leave and be sure to watch us 3 to 5 p.m. Eastern time on Peacock. Appreciate you.